Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're over here by the swamp at the kelp farm that we built in the last episode. And as you just saw, some of the kelp is flowing up to the surface, getting trapped in those hoppers and siphoning itself into the chest perfectly. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Thank you guys so much for all the lovely comments. On the last episode, I have emptied it out a couple of times to get ourselves some kelp. One person did point out that this hopper up here is not doing anything. Well done. <laughs> I completely missed that, the fact that I, I figured I was probably going to put a chest like going over there, but then this hopper would just empty into this chest, so that hopper can go away. <laughs> we don't need that. Let me see if I can hop up here real quick and grab it. No, probably not, right? Let's get the ender pearls out. Let's use those. Hop oh, and... There it is. <laughs> it's hiding on the edge of another hopper. There we go. Fantastic. So that's all looking a little bit more like it should. And folks in the comments seem to really enjoy the suggestion of turning this into some sort of crashed or sunken ship. And the fact that it was landlocked did not deter your imaginations, you wonderful people, you. Because people said there are a bunch of different explanations that could take place for exactly why a ship would be here in the first place. Even though there are no sea passages out to the ocean that's over there, they said that maybe this whole area could maybe have been like flooded at one point and then the ship wrecked here and when the waters receded it kind of converted into a swamp and that's why the ship is here. Alternatively, people could be building a ship here for some reason or maybe it could just have been dragged here over land like the Vikings used to do with their ships. I like all of these ideas. So I think we are going to convert this into a shipwreck of sorts and it's kind of going to be one of the features of what I want to call Old Town. I mentioned this idea a little while ago when we were planning out the city, but Founders Forge is not just going to be over here on the plains. In fact, I feel like for it to feel like a city, it would have to occupy more than one biome. The biomes in this world are the standard default size. They are not particularly large, and to build a city, you really need a, a large biome or your city needs to cover multiple biomes. And so on a live stream last week, I started planning out a few roads for Old Town. And I think I'm going to do a little bit more work on this today. So these are kind of floating jetties or pontoons. I forget what the technical term is for the ones that are kind of just like floating platforms out here on the water. There are going to be a lot of houses on stilts and shacks and witch hut style things out here in the swamp to represent Old Town. And it's going to be the site of one of the blacksmiths. We're going to have the the kelp, uh, the kelp block powered blacksmith is going to be out here as well, probably on one of the more land kind of based areas, because I feel like having it out here in the swamp seems a little bit counterproductive to the whole blacksmith profession. But I think it's going to be on one of the shores over there. And I think it's going to be really cool to just set up this old and rickety feel of Old Town. As if, as if this was kind of the town originally, but it has slowly deteriorated over time and people have moved onto the more solid ground and the slightly more fashionable living quarters of the main area of Founders Forge around the ravine. Some folks even suggested that the ravine being here in the first place could either be where all the water from this giant flood had drained into or perhaps could be indicative of a lot of environmental change in the area. And just the fact that this has opened up meant there was some kind of cataclysm that either caused this whole swamp area to fill up or that maybe some of the land in the swamp to rise and block passage to the sea or maybe that could have had something to do with the flood that meant the ship was there in the first place so there's there's a lot of lore developing around here and you guys are really helping me out with that so I appreciate your kind of little storyline suggestions in the comments it means your imaginations are working with me and I like that a lot so I'm going to do a bit more work here in Old Town today I'm going to lay out a few more pathways through this more swampy section. All we're doing with these is alternating planks and slabs of various different wood types. So we've got the dark oak, the oak, the spruce, and a little bit of jungle mixed in here and there. We also have these jungle logs acting as supports for these walkways. And, you know, realistically speaking, they're not supporting all that much, but it's nice to have something down here kind of indicating that these are supported from the bottom of the uh, the swamp lake here. And you can grow seagrass on them as well. So if you trim seagrass with some shears, which I don't have on me right now, alternatively, if you bone meal anything underwater, usually seagrass grows up on it. And you could probably add little bits of kelp and other water dressing in here. Probably even some dead coral around the place would be quite atmospheric for it as well. That seems like a good idea. And you can just you know, make these winding pathways in much the same way we've done with the path blocks over in the plains area of Founders Forge, except here it's just a little bit more time consuming because it involves a lot of block placing. 
But I'm going to get on with that. I feel like we can make a little bit of progress on that today, and maybe we will tackle a little bit of the design of our sunken ship here as well. So that's about as far as I'm going to get for now. I think I don't really want to do too much more of this without kind of establishing a build style for this place and a bit of a, a block palette. Now, as you can see from, from here, it does look very kind of patchworky and that's kind of part of the aesthetic I want to go for. I'm a little bit concerned that it's too checkerboard-like almost, but I think it should be okay. The main thing is that the houses in between each of these are going to be breaking some stuff up a little bit and kind of shielding from the fact that this just looks like a giant, I don't know, like children's game board or something like that. <laughs> Isn't this whole game a children's game board, really? Now, let's get into the air a second and take a look from above, because the pathways are actually going to branch out further into the swamp, but obviously once we hit the land masses over here, we can go back to using like pathway blocks and stuff like that to make it look like an actual road is in place. And around here, we'll probably start to fill in some of these grassy areas, move some of the trees, and then continue the paths up this way, like so. And while I don't want to do a huge amount of terraforming, I do think that at least starting these off with some like patches of land here and there will actually give these houses a bit more of a foundation than just the stilts. It seems kind of silly to have houses with stilts that rise all the way from the bottom of the swamp lake. So I think maybe putting in some some bits and pieces of grass and and dirt here and there will at least give these things the impression that they are on little islands here and there, as well as being held up by, you know, foundations of wood trunk and that kind of thing. So I think what we will do is grab a few more things from here. I think I might stick to dark oak, even though we're using that quite extensively over in the main part of Founders Forge. It's going to differentiate it a little bit from the uh, jungle wood logs that I've used to prop up these pontoons and let's face it it does kind of look like it's been underwater for a little while the wood is darkened and we could even start stripping sections of it here and there to kind of make it look like it's been worn away by whatever <laughs> whatever is whatever chemicals are at work in this swamp I guess I think I will probably also want to use a little bit of brown terracotta and maybe even some green here and there as well I've got enough terracotta that we can give that a go possibly even mix in a little bit of green concrete here and there but I think the green terracotta is going to give that sort of earthy vibe it's it's a little bit more textured than the concrete so having plenty of cactus in this farm means we can cook up a little bit of cactus green and be well on our way to a very swampy color palette. And thankfully the Update Aquatic has given us ways to make underwater builds look even better because we have kelp, we have seagrass, there are, there's the opportunity to waterlog blocks and stuff like that, meaning that yeah, we can have some slabs and stairs around here and have this entire area feel a little bit more swampy and run down than it ever could before. So I'm gonna do a little bit of work on that right now. Starting, I think, with a couple of houses around here. Now we're going to have bits of water still kind of scattered around the place, but we do still want this to be accessible from the main boardwalk here. So we're gonna try and build it tight into these pontoons that we've laid out and make sure that we can give it an odd number for the build. So let's actually have that one come up here, strengthening both the boardwalk and the house with these two logs kind of next to each other that should work out okay. Even though you can't really grow vines underwater, if I try and place one there, it just disappears, doesn't even break as a block. It's still nice putting them up the sides of these logs and the swamp color actually works really well to complement the dark oak there. I quite like that. That's, that's probably gonna be a good foundation for some of this stuff. How does the brown terracotta look underwater? That's not too bad. In fact, that could almost be kind of like a swampy floor. If I took out, say, take out the clay from underneath here because we can repurpose this clay elsewhere it's not going to look super great underneath the swamp if we put like a patch of this underground in this area where the uh the the dirt is kind of moving away that's that's not too bad i could decorate a whole area with this i kind of like that having this muddy patch underground thanks to the uh the brown terracotta is not too bad i used to do this a little bit with soul sand i had a, a lake on decidedly vanilla season four where i would decorate the entire bottom of the lake with soul sand unfortunately the update aquatic has made that less of a viable option because soul sand creates bubble columns but not a bad effect now let me go and grab some bone meal and see if we can still bone meal the terracotta to get a ton of seagrass. 
And bam, yes you can, oh fantastic, good. So the seagrass I've actually been trimming with shears and scattering around the place, but if all it takes is a couple of bits of bone meal, and of course the hot air balloon is cranking out skeletons for us when we need bones, it should be nice and straightforward to kind of decorate these areas with a little bit more seagrass, even though there's a lot of it in the swamp already. You can even shear a couple of them if you want to place them manually, but all you need to do is bone meal an area and break the ones you don't want, and you've got a whole heap of seagrass there to play with. That's, that's nice looking. <laughs> it really does give the swamps a lot more character to have all of this greenery growing around. And the odd bit of kelp flowing up from the swamp floor is not going to be a problem either. And remember from our lesson about kelp when we did the kelp farm, the age of kelp can only reach a maximum of 25. Once it reaches age 24, it will only grow one more block and that's as high as it will get, meaning that this one that I've just placed down here, starting at age 23, is only going to grow two blocks high, which means we don't have to worry too much about it breaching the surface and everything here looking the same height. So if you're getting really detail oriented with decorating swamps like this, you can just place a bunch of new kelp and keep breaking and replacing it until it gets to an age that you think is going to be uh, sh short enough that it won't reach the surface every single time. So like for this one, age 21, that's only going to grow up four more blocks, which will just about reach the surface. But if you're working with a slightly deeper body of water, you can always take that into account. So let's throw in some of this green terracotta to work into the, <laughs> the body of the house. I think it's a little bit on the nose for the whole swamp aesthetic, but you know what? I think we could make it work. We could even work in some different colors into the roofs as well if if we've got the materials to do that, I think it wouldn't be such a bad thing. So I'm drafting up a couple of things here and I managed to terraform a little island in the center of the swamp here. It's so, so simple just to make this stuff look blended in now. I mean, you've even got the seagrass blending into a little bit of grass grown up on the top of here. But what I actually want to do is kind of have a bridge leading over to like a second section of this house, as though they've pretty much had to abandon the bottom floor of this because it got too waterlogged. And instead they have two kind of separate sections, one of which is built on the dry land here and the other of which is like up the top of this bit here. And I don't know, like the, the vision for it is slowly coming together in my head. It's a little bit difficult to describe, but maybe if I do this in the form of a time-lapse build, you guys will be able to see what I mean.
Welcome back, folks. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. This is a strange house. This is a very weird, eclectic house. And I get that's kind of meant to be the point of this area, but I was kind of spitballing this. I was freestyling it as I built, and I'm not 100% sure I like it. I kind of like this design. It's a kind of vaguely, like, almost Japanese tower sort of you know, shrine-inspired sort of thing. <laughs> like, the, the 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 roof really reminds me of, like, a samurai helmet or something like that. I started off kind of remodeling this section a whole bunch. I really wasn't sure what to do with this section. I came upon this design, and I thought, you know what, we can do that, we can do that in cobblestone on the right-hand side. So I think I'm sort of establishing a build style here, but don't be surprised if this changes a little bit in terms of its appearance over the next few episodes, because... Yeah, I'm still not 100% about this place. Mainly, it's just the sheer amount of wood that has gone into this. Like, there's a lot of wood there. And I've swapped out these two blocks here for cobblestone, and there's, I, I need more cobblestone accents. I need to learn, I think, to trust cobblestone a little bit more, because I've always sort of thought of it as that's the material you use when you're building your first starter house, because it's the stuff that you've got to hand, and you haven't got a silk touch pickaxe to get tons of smooth stone yet. So... Yeah, maybe I need to just be a little bit more generous with cobblestone. I've just noticed, actually, there is a section up there that I need to add one more cobblestone stair to that, for whatever reason, I missed in the original build. Uh, there we go. Yes, okay, fine. <laughs> and I'll break these leaves on the way down. Don't need to worry too much about the leaves. But the structure of this place is quite unique because both of the bottom floors are still hollow and are effectively kind of useless. In fact, I put a I put a counter here because I thought this could almost be some sort of little trading post out here in the swamp. In the same way that the folks in Founders Forge have their own shops that we've been working on in previous episodes, the shops here are just going to be kind of hole-in-the-wall style things where somebody's got stock behind here, they can put down a couple of chests or something like that, and they're just going to have like wares behind here to sell and we could probably make it kind of chaotic behind here like there's no real system to the whole thing and they're just trading out of the bottom of this house but around here if you go in here there really isn't any kind of house to speak of around here either like the entire bottom of this building has rotted away and we can even put in a couple of slabs around here waterlogged automatically thanks to the new feature of 1.13 that would make it seem like there was a wall here but it just kind of fell away the actual house is up here if you go up into the top part of the house there's actually a little living space up here the bridge goes across to the top of this part and this actually feels a little bit better put together this feels like some place you might actually want to live in uh give or take if you if you felt like living in a swamp <laughs> anyway but i think yeah i think i'm kind of i'm happy with the vibe of this i think the material choice could just be a little bit better and we could work on exactly what the build style of this place is i need to do some drafting in creative really just to figure out what exactly i'm doing wrong and how i can make this entire place feel a little bit more cohesive and keep that tumble down feel whilst also making the builds look a little prettier. Basically, how I can stop using quite so much wood and different types of wood everywhere because it feels a little bit spammy in terms of the block palette. But that is the start of what's going to be the Old Town section around here. And I think we're going to work on the shipwreck style thing another time. That's going to be a massive project and I kind of don't want to I don't want to get it done in a rush. I want to think this stuff through, maybe do a bit of drafting for that in creative as well and leave a little bit of space around it so that we can build something a little bigger. But even from other angles, I think this place is looking, it's looking decent. It's looking halfway decent. And my gosh, I need to get out of the swamp because there are so many mobs around here. But that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.